What's up everyone? Welcome to the channel. If you're new, my name is Michelle and we are watching the final, like the final, final last part of Attack on Titan. And oh my goodness, what a masterpiece of an anime this has been. Like it, the storytelling is off the charts for, well, mm, I was going to say it's off the charts for an anime, but let me not do that because let's be honest some of the best storytelling you or i have ever gotten into have come from anime i think of like cowboy bebop or berserk which you know rest in peace but they're still continuing berserk i still keep up so hopefully that wraps up wonderfully as well like attack on titan wraps up wonderfully i, I just oh can't i can't i can't i want to get into it so badly but let me just get through this I think I started Attack on Titan, I want to say 2018, 2017, around that time. I actually heard of it. I like I used to see gifs of people running around weirdly and things like that, but I never got into it. My sister did though, and she's the one who introduced it to me. She put on Crunchyroll on her TV and had me sit down and I watched it. And I think back to the first scene that just gripped me. And interestingly enough, it wasn't the death of Carla. It was, you know, after everything, like in the second episode, when everything kind of calms down a bit and they're trying to like plow the land so crops can grow, but nothing happens. So they send all of the people, well, not all the people, but like a good portion of the population out to reclaim the land from the Titans. And they send Armin's father out there, gar well, grandfather out there. And then there's this scene where he's holding his grandfather's hat and like this little guitar version of the sound of the soundtrack comes on while he's holding his grandfather's hat. And that scene just destroyed me. I cried. That was the first scene I ever cried while watching Attack on Titan was Armin mourning the death of his grandfather and that was the scene that like it just like you have all of the action but I, I'm like the action is great don't get me wrong but the, one of the main things I look for in storytelling is how does it deal with the aftermath and Attack on Titan is one of the it's like it's it's like top two in dealing with like that come down like having your characters feel everything that's happened to them like there's another scene where uh hanji is like stopping mikasa like when they think armin's about to die well he almost did die but when she's holding her and she's like i've had to bury thousands of my friends along the way and that just that scene of hanji like that's one of my favorite moments in the anime all together it's just that moment of hanji describing all of the people she's lost and you see her like mo watching Movelet die while protecting her oh my god there's just so many amazing moments it attack on titan is a masterpiece because you have your big iconic like the rhina bertolt reveal like those iconic moments and yet it's the small scenes those little things that grip you like that is storytelling when those moments capture you like i said it's the come down after those big action scenes that can really just punch a hole through you it's what invests you in these characters it's not like action action plot plot it's it's characterization and oh i i've seen so many people like hate on the ending like when when the manga ended i think it was like maybe two years ago it ended or three years ago and I saw my timeline people were trashing it I saw comments of people trashing it and so I'm like is it bad or is it just you know like you know when any like you know how they see people will never be satisfied with how something ends like you'll always have people who like wanted it to go this way and that loud minority takes of everything so I am hoping that those people are just a loud minority and it's a Damn, look, I hear here's the, here's the thing. I fully trust that this will end well because of everything that's happened before. I don't think he will drop the ball on this. I just don't see. I don't see see I don't see uh Isayama dropping the ball on this. I just don't. He's just too damn good of a storyteller. He's crafted a masterpiece from the very first chapter to the end. I fully believe the ending is gonna be just as great. So you know what? Let's just get into this grab a drink grab a snack whatever it is you like to do when you watch your favorite reactions just get comfortable and let's get to
the battle of heaven and earth. My goodness. I can't believe we're here, y'all. I can't believe it. Oh, damn. Uh oh. So you're just gonna blow Aaron up? I like the plan. Willing to die. <laughs> oh, shit. I think they're all willing to die. They've been willing to die since the beginning. Armin's growth, man. Is that a foot I'm seeing? Um, um, what is that? Oh, oh, Jesus, what is in your mouth, boy? He can see her? Oh, shit, what is that? Um, what are you, what are you, we have a new Titan? Have we seen that Titan? Guys, have we seen that Titan? I don't think we've seen that Titan. What kind of Titan is that? What the hell? He's like spawning clay titans. Or are they just made out of bone? <laughs> oh, please don't break this man's neck. Ooh, what was that? <sighs> Thunder spears. Yeah, that's a very fair question. What are they? Are they just made out of the bones? Is Aaron just spawning them? Oh. It's like, I am friends, I got no quarrels killing him. She's like, okay, we're not going back, we're going forward. Screw Armin, we're going straight to the mate of Aaron. Ooh, okay, Pete. Okay, Pete. <laughs> She's like, I'm not friends. I got no problem blowing his shit apart. Mikasa. Who speared her? Shit. The Warhammer. I love the soundtrack. Yes, animation. I'm gonna miss the ODM animation, man. This shit was revolutionary. Let's go, Levi. Levi is missing fingers and eye, and he's still kicking ass. The strongest soldier. Who's this? Oh my god. Oh, G can can y'all please get whatever the hell that is? What is in his mouth? Well, how do we stop her? I mean... Oh, Bertolt. Bertolt was like, you took my titan, ate me, and stole my girl. Can you not? I kind of feel bad for Bertolt. His ending was so sad of him begging them not to- Oh, God. Oh, shit. They did not just kill- his mother saw- Ryan is not dead. Ryan is not dead. Can y'all not kill him off? All these characters have been through way too much shit. I don't want anybody to die at this point. Like, I feel like they've suffered so much throughout this story that at this point, you just want it to end. You want the death to end. You want the misery to end. At this point, you just want it to stop at this part of the story. What the hell? Amir, can you stop? Like, I get why. Aaron's already going forward. <laughs> like, he's already looking to slaughter everybody. You don't need to do all this. Mika's like, fine, then I'll have to do all this shit myself. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ooh. Let's go, Mikasa. Shit! Can you stop f***ing up, Levi? That man's body's already been through- Oh, thank you, Mikasa. Let's go, Mikasa! Save everybody! She's like, I'll have to do this shit myself. I'm the new strongest. <laughs> oh, this is like her speech! On the, the roof! I'm- Yes! A what? <gasps> Any king! Ooh! Is that his bird titan thingy? 
<laughs> They're all shocked, bitch. I'm shocked too. <laughs> Their face, Rada's face. Rada's like, what the hell just happened here? You still got a leg because I'm pretty sure that shit got chomped. I love that Levi's still here, guys. Like, he's leading in a way and coming up with plans. It's like the spirit of Aravind in lives in him. Like, he's, like, carrying all of the scouts that we've lost behind on his back and in this moment. <laughs> this is Aaron, though. The amount of love they have for him, like, they he frustrates the shit out of everybody. But they love that boy. Look at the animation on Jean's face. Shit, they don't- no one wants to do this. I look, he hate Aaron for doing this to them. There are so many. Emir, I'ma need you to stop. Peak sword. Ooh, yes, sword. Oh wait, no, I can't be rooting for y'all. <laughs> Ooh. The soundtrack, yes. Oh my goodness, this brings me back. <laughs> Oh, oh, he, oh, girl, oh, girl. <laughs> oh, my goodness, girl, she is brave. <laughs> Ooh, yes. Oh, that looked so wrong. I swear that looked wrong. If y'all, if y'all saw what I saw. Oh, thank God. Shit. Oh. Damn, she's quick. Yes. Peak. Peak is peak. Oh, that was close. That was close. Why do I want to cry right now? Yes. Uh, the original scouts listed, I, I adore them. I'm glad that they're... They, it's them. Like, they're carrying on the spirit of what the Survey Corps was about. Not like the bastardization version that uh, Flock and them rooted for, which you understand why they did. But at the same time, it's not what the Survey Corps' root goal was, but the spirit of the thing was. <laughs> and the body betrays you. <laughs> My god, his voice actor is putting his heart and soul into this sh this is how you voice act. My goodness. Oh, there's nowhere to go. Mm. The animals too. No one's spared. Nothing is spared. Shit. Just complete destruction. And then that vacant look in the colossal eyes. It's just even more horrifying. Oh, the baby! No! No, 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 no! Everything's in black and white but the mother and the baby. Oh, did they fall? Oh. oh, they saved her baby. The red against the black and white is just like red for blood. Long dream. Mother, Konyoni. Okay. 
Is this like the Big Bang? It adapted. Yes. It's the theory of adapt or die. Yes. より巨大な不死身の体を生み出し、そして死さえそれが死と弓る。ここが死の存在しない世界。ああ。死を存続させることが君にとってそんなに大事なのか。今起きていることは恐怖に支配された。He oh. is very nihilistic. I guess it makes sense given the life that he's had. Okay. Yeah, that's part of it. Just because death is on the other side of life doesn't mean you avoid life. So he feels like human beings are just slaves to procreation and nothing more? You find meaning in life, though. イーダシペのエレンがいきなり駆け出してそうあえてエレンの後ろを走ったやっぱり僕その時僕はなぜかこう思ったここで三人で駆け子をするために生まれてきたんじゃないあの何でもない一瞬がうんそれは Oh, I guess it, to him it's the baseball that he used to throw it. Yeah. It brought you moments of peace. It's a representation of that bond he had with him. We find meaning in things beyond procreation. In fact, we procreate because we can find meaning in it. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm. Wow, Armin. That <laughs> peak is still going. <gasps> Reminds me when she said give Aaron back to Annie. Now let him go. <gasps> Armin! What is he doing? <laughs> like, Listen, I still believe so we need to sterilize everybody. <laughs> Thank you for bringing me into this world. That way I can meet the man I identified more with as my dad. Thanks. <laughs> I'm glad they're all getting a chance to come back. It's like for the big finale. And it is the big finale. Why am I seeing your ash cheeks again, Zeke? <laughs> Probably would be, yes. You, I still remember. Oh, shit. Levi's like, well, let me not waste any time. I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> Shit, what an image. What an image. Wow. He's like, well, I'm not gonna waste any f time taking your monkey head off. <laughs> Did Levi stop the rumbling when he killed? <gasps> the baby lives? Oh, but it's mama. Yes, music! No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Let me not do that. Oh, shit. Yes, John! Yes, John! F*** it up, John! Oh, it up, John! Let's go! The second it all stopped, they're like, okay, we, we got a moment. Oh. Oh, John. <laughs> Suicidal dumbass. Oh, my goodness. What the f*** is that? Um... Oh, it's trying to connect it. Yes, Rhino! Hold that bitch back. I don't know what you are, but hold that the centipede looking bitch back. Sayonara. Shit. Eden. 
So Sean blew it up. Ryan is holding the centipede looking bitch back and then Armin just goes nuclear on him. Head. Oh shit, he's still living. Oh my god, why does he look even creepier than he always already did? And the long hair too. What the hell? Oh yes! We've been waiting for them to reunite since the finale of season one. Are they about to turn it into- Oh shit. They're about to turn into titans. Don't breathe that bitch in. Don't breathe that stuff in. Oh. They have- Oh my god. Wait, John and Connie are down there. Excuse me. Oh my god, they breathed it in. This is happening way too fast. <gasps> no. Oh my god, goodness. <laughs> Sean and Connie. Ryan is holding on for dear life. Watch strength. <gasps> I recognize Sean. Oh my god. His mom. Shh. Oh my god. No one can take it anymore. Mikasa. Mikasa. What? Mikasa. What? Why are you This is like, it's like reversed. What? That that scene. She asked why you were crying when he woke up. I'll make one more promise. I'll die. Throw the scar. No. No. No, that was something she fought for back in the first season when she said she'd hold on to those memories. If she dies, she. What happened to his face? What was that? Like a, like a fantasy? But. He said throw away the scarf. Why would Mikasa want that? She wouldn't want that. So what was that? I can't. So did that really happen? So that happened? They ran away? Is that like Shit. Oh my god, what is that? Wrong to the Yes animation! Oh my god, it's so good! Please be careful, your leg is all out by it. It's all yeah. Ooh! I love the lighting from the animators. You put your foot into this shit and said, I'm gonna put God tier work on the screen. Oh, that is. Wait, they're talking about the fight? 
Oh my god, it's not a flashback. They're kid. Wait. Are they in paths? Is it like paths power? Like. <laughs> wow, so he wanted to position them to the be heroes to sort of rewrite their reputation in the world. <sighs> You're seeing all the things they talked about. <laughs> I can't right now. <laughs> Why is Aaron looking at him like that? So you mean what? Fritzo, I stayed up. Oh, so the girl, you send them top them, you mean she was it's good. So she fell in love with the man who could she make a coyote stick with a dark old motor to release her from her love for him. Oh, they're older now. Oh, Mikasa was the one who freed her. Uh, killed you? <laughs> oh, wow. So he was moving forward to. It was all for Mikasa to get to that point. I can only imagine. Shit, so he can't tell what he's experiencing now, if it's the past, if it's the future. What? He killed his mom? I have to rewatch this again. This is too much. It's so much information. <laughs> I like that they're finally confirming his feelings for her. Oh. <laughs> what an only for the rest of my <laughs> For at least 10 years. Aaron's one of those. I don't want you to be happy without me. <laughs> I know two songs. <laughs> don't tell me so I cry like a baby. <laughs> oh, wow. He's so... Jeez. Mmm. Oh, wow. Aaron, we're finally getting a chance to see him. We're seeing him. Jesus, how does the earth recover from that? You killed animals too. We saw them giraffes. I attempt to... So this hasn't happened yet. So he's telling him what will happen. So Armin knew all this time, or maybe he erased his memories. So he didn't know. So this conversation happened already, but when? <sighs> He's the definition of letting intrusive thoughts win. Nigga. <laughs> You're not supposed to let your intrusive thoughts win. <laughs> Oh shit, in hell. <laughs> oh, he's not letting Aaron bear the burden of this on his own. We'll go to hell together. Aaron's just going first. Yeah, I had a feeling you raised. Oh, God. <laughs> that far back on the boat. 
Oh, the bird. Did he use the bird? Did he inhabit a bird? <laughs> Aaron, are you a bird? In a way, you are a bird. <laughs> oh my god, Aaron. <gasps> oh no. Ooh, Sasha's family. <laughs> and you saw Niccolo. Oh my god. Okay, Eldia, can y'all not? Eldia, I need y'all to stop. エルディア国民が崇めるエレンを殺した連中が和平交渉の連合国大使を務めるなんて。if Paradino stops, Paradis about to piss me the f off. Can y'all stop? Stop with the aggression. Choosahedan,は夢見がちで、諦めの悪い連中だから、パラディ島のみんなは知りたいはずだから、僕たちの物語を。Oh, this Levi go around giving candy to kids. Oh. Oh, he lives with little refugees. He gives them a little candy. Oh, Levi. I'm glad he got to live a, like, a semi-peaceful life. Oh, look at them in their little suits. Hmm. So that's what he means when Armin narrating the entire story, like, let's tell our story. And so that's what we've been watching the entire time, him telling the story. <gasps> oh, wow. Oh, Mikasa. Oh, I want to give her a hug. <laughs> Oh, I hate that she's all alone. Oh, the bird. Oh, I put the scarf up on the. Oh, Erin's <laughs> oh, still watching over her. Oh, Erin. Oh, my goodness. Oh, she was buried in the scarf. Oh, Mikasa. Oh, oh, oh. Technology. <laughs> Buildings. Oh, shit. <laughs> Skyscrapers. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. oh 
Oh shit. Oh my god. Was that 9-11 that just happened? <laughs> Did place just crash into like the Twin Towers or something? Oh shit. Well, I think Irvin did say it. It's like, shit, I don't think anybody, I don't think war is, uh, like, as long as people are still around, war is gonna, conflict is always gonna be there. It's like, until there's only one human being left. <laughs> and even then, that person might find a way to conflict, like, fight with themselves. <laughs> oh, shit, so I guess Parody ended up binding it. <laughs> But, of course, we're like centuries later. Your child, what are you doing? The end is no more to be continued! No! How many tissues did I use for this thing? <laughs> like four? Four snotty makeup covered. Look at this! <laughs> just tears and snot. I have to throw that away. <laughs> what a masterpiece. This might be the best. Listen, I, I have nostalgic animes, and I don't want to say objectively this was the best anime I've ever seen, but my god, it is up there. This is peak storytelling. Truly is. Yusoyama put his heart and soul into this piece of work. Like, this is... This is something that will stand the test of time. It's a phenomenal story, and I'm glad I watched it. I'm glad I watched this. Okay, so that's it. There's no more Attack on Titan. It's, it's just, it's over. I can't believe it ended. You know, it's so funny. I was mocking this shit for taking forever to end, but it's, it's finally over, and... I don't know how many tears I've cried watching this. It's just this anime. There are no words to the emotions it's drawn out of me throughout the years. Like, there's just so many. I talked about in the intro the scenes that the one, the first scene that really gripped me and made me cry will always be that scene where Armin finds out like he's just holding his grandfather's hat and he's gone now. And, and they, like, to, to, to just to population control to survive like whatever they had left it just it that 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 gripped me that that was the first moment that really like okay this is something else like yes the action is always gonna be phenomenal like you never have to doubt the creativity behind the action scenes it's just those quiet moments the aftermath that always just pulls you in it just Aaron and Mikasa and Armin, my god, that just, the love between all three of them is just, it's, it, it hurts. And then you have, I really thought John and Connie were dead and I'm glad they came back. I'm like, oh my goodness, and they saw Sasha and Levi saw the scouts. Oh my god, this was the perfect ending to a perfect story. It just everyone should watch Attack on Titan. It's such a shame that people really just stick their nose up to animation. They don't really tune into the story that it's telling. I understand if it's too much, like it's too graphic or it's too cruel or it's too... I get that. Like there are certain things I can't watch because it's just too gory. So I understand that aspect. But if you, you turn away from good storytelling just because you find the medium to be not worthy of your attention... It's like you miss out on such good storytelling from someone who clearly cares about continuity and, and the characters and just, oh my god, I'm glad I watched. There's, there's certain things where you're like, well, that was a waste of my time, years dedicated to this, <laughs> and it just ended horrifically. <laughs> but this, I, I don't feel like I wasted my time at all. I am grateful that I watched Attack on Titan, that my sister said, no, it's really good. Like she, like the first scene, like the first, the ending of the first episode she said was just so shocking. But once you get past that, you can just keep up with it. It's funny how my sister was the one who put me on to this and she stopped watching because she didn't like the turn of um, 
like the the basement reveal my sister was like one of the rare people who did not like the basement reveal and she kind of gave up on the story after that she preferred everything prior i loved the basement reveal and it was the basement reveal that really gripped me even more into the story that everything like i've never seen a story just completely flip like that it just it's like it became something else and I guess that's why she didn't like it. But like, it's like two stories in one story. And just, it's, oh my goodness. I want to rewatch the entire thing. I'm going to. And I'm going to force my sister to like the basement reveal. <laughs> the, I will say, the thing that is a bit confusing at first, like I'm, I'm kind of theorizing, is the Emir Fritz, Mikasa connection. But I'm thinking, Emir has been trapped. I'm guessing what she wanted was to be loved by King Fritz. Like, to be more than just this tool for his power and his conquest. We did see that glimpse. I feel like there's a parallel moment between where she was walking and she saw two adults kissing when Zeke was talking about not, not understanding what Emir wants. And then it kind of paralleled Mikasa and Aaron, like when Mikasa kisses uh, Aaron after she kills him and Emir's watching. I kind of felt like that was a parallel. Like you saw what she wanted and then I'm guessing she finds the strength to let go of King Fritz and that love she has. Like, like Mikasa found the strength to kill the one she loves for the greater good in a way. And so I'm assuming that was the connection. That's what finally let Amir let go of King Fritz and just find peace in a way. I wish we gotten a bit more of that, but I understand it's not about that. Like, I feel like the story became more than Titans and it became more focused on humans and that connection. The Titans kind of became secondary once the basement was revealed, but you still kind of have to like tie it all in together. So you need to give it a nod, but you don't need to go in. I think if, if Isayama made the choice to go even more in depth into it, it probably would have ruined it, but keeping it surface level and letting the connection between all of the characters really shine. I think that was a brilliant choice because if you get too caught up into it, it kind of detracts from the story. Sometimes you don't need to go into great detail to explain things. Sometimes it's not about that. It's more so about the repercussions of the choices your characters make. And explaining these things won't it won't add to that. It won't change their choices. So I, I kind of get it. I get leaving it surface level and letting your audience ext extrapolate what they choose to see or feel it means. And I, I like when stories know when to do that and when not to do that. Like, you know how sometimes they have like a big information reveal and they cut it and it's like, no, you need to see those moments. You can't just cut away from it. Not to bring in Game of Thrones, but one of the things that I always feel is such a punk move was when they completely cut the scene, like they just cut away, like they didn't even write it most likely, of John telling his family that about his parentage and they didn't even write dialogue for that. I felt that was such a cowardly move. Write that scene. Those are the scenes that really make it like worth it. So I feel like knowing when to when you have to put those moments in and when you don't need to and you can leave it to your audience is such a master writer and he is he truly is a master writer he knows when to go in detail and when not to how to keep your audiences focused on what matters and not to get lost into the details that can sometimes take away from the story I don't feel like okay the the reveal of the centipede it's like yeah like life will out adapt or die those little things you kind of you kind of get that feel from the centipede living but it's not even about that it's about the choices human beings then made with the power that's the focus and he didn't lose sight of that if you get what i'm saying like i'm not mad at it the mikasa thing with aaron pardon me i at first i didn't get it 
like I couldn't tell if this was happening in the past or if, if it's in the future but when when Mikasa responds like at first I thought it was like the headache she was getting was like she's creating this little fantasy in her head like a place to escape from this the enormity of what is about to happen the death of Aaron like everyone keeps telling her and she's trying to create like this escape but when she comes out of it and she's responding to Aaron's last which is like wait like to me there were certain parts that didn't make sense like Mikasa would never advocate for like if it's truly an escape a fantasy Mikasa came up with it wouldn't make sense for Aaron to say throw away the scarf if you get what I'm saying like he created this entire um like he I guess that scene when uh they go to Marley I'm guessing he rewrote that scene the way he probably wanted it to happen because she's when he asks what am I to you she says family but I'm guessing he wanted to hear lover like I love you he wanted to hear that and it like Minka said just couldn't say it makes sense it was like like it came out of nowhere and she probably never got a chance to kind of like explore her own feelings for Aaron like she didn't get that opportunity because they're in war like there's no uh, there's no space in your heart or in your mind to really think about those like love and things like that so she when he asked it was just like she panicked and she just said like he gave her like am I family or am I something else like like so she just like he kind of fed her a response in a way that she can hit like grapple on without having to come to terms with her own feelings but I never doubted that there was love there, in my opinion. I feel like it was pretty clear in the story. Like, I, it's not a romance, no, but I feel like it's pretty obvious in storytelling and storytelling like this. Like, yeah, like they don't, it's not overt, but it's there. So it makes like, it's not, it's not like this big I, head turn, like, oh my God, they're in love. Like, yeah, they're in love. They're just in war. They can't really act on anything right now. And they're young. They don't understand their feelings for each other. Like, you know, it's that whole awkward thing. We don't know how to deal with our feelings anime. <laughs> so I like that in the scene with Armin, it kind of explains everything with Mikasa. Like, you kind of put it together like, oh, okay. As you're watching Aaron and Armin, you're kind of making sense of it with what that scene was back there like earlier on if you're gonna say like that scene kind of explains that as it's happening and speaking of armin and aaron their bond was on full display i just oh my god them walking through all of the things they said they wanted to see together like let's see it together and the fact that it starts off with them as kids and then their teenage selves i mean well young young teenage selves and then teenage versions of themselves like and it really puts into focus their kids they're, they're still so young they're still teenagers like aaron died young oh my god that hurts it hurts like i, I but i do like that so many times in storytelling the person like i just watched captain america like i reacted to that and and a huge part of it is that he's gifted this incredible power because of who he is and so it, you like he like the doctor's always saying you're a good man like focus on that and that will lead you down the right path you'll be able to deal with this strength because of who you are it won't change you you know what it is to be weak whereas for aaron i like that the story really did what happens when this kind of power lands in the wrong the hands of the wrong person because prior to aaron getting that power he had very i feel like i always got the feeling that aaron was a very angry child <laughs> and that anger never went anywhere and it makes sense he grew up in war like where 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 in aaron's life was he supposed to be able to grow up and learn to grapple with his feelings there was no space for him to do that like, I feel like a huge part of the story is lost when you don't realize that, like, through season one to episode three, it's like, episode three to season three, it's like months. It's it's like a month or two months or three months. It's not a long time. It's a short period of time all this is happening to them. They're still teenagers. They're like 15, 14. And they're traumatized. They're traumatized teenagers dealing with the threat of death, watching people die all the time so to me it makes sense that aaron didn't get a chance to grow up and and learn to expand his world views expand the way he grapples with things it's and and the reveal of his mother 
I can't believe I forgot that. The way I'm guessing is that I'm trying to think of that scene. I might have to watch. I could be wrong. I'm, I'm definitely going to rewatch this again with a keener eye, but I'm guessing because the past, the present, and the future was all happening at once, he must have thought, or maybe, maybe Aaron interfering in the past is why all of this happened. Like, okay, it's this is such a weird thing when you get into it, because he thinks Bertolt is about like, because you know how the the pure titans will eat the the shifter titans in order to reclaim like they're they're searching to reclaim themselves or their bodies and so they're naturally gravitated like that's where they eat humans or other shifter titans so maybe that titan was going to go for Bertolt and if he went for Bertolt then his mother doesn't die and the story like then it completely gets like I actually like the fact that he did that because it's 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 in the moment. He doesn't really think that. Wait a minute, if Bertolt dies here, then Armin, what happened? Then everything that happens to Armin doesn't happen. The entire story gets rewritten, but he doesn't have time to think of that. And so, in a way, it's like he wrote the story with that one action. But that action, the fact Aaron can't influence that moment unless it all happened the way it happened. I get it. It's like the past, the present, and the future is simultaneously happening. He saves Bertolt's life because it's like, wait a minute, Bertolt has to live in order to save Armin's life down the line. But it's like, wait a minute, if Armin, if, if Bertolt dies here, so much of what happens doesn't happen. But the only reason he has the opportunity to even think about this, it's like, it's like, I get it, the past, the present, and the future, like, that is what's going on in his head. And so he's just this, like, he says, it's, his head is a mess. Oh my goodness. It's like, you want, it's like, retro, like, retroactively, you want to spend more time in Aaron's head to really, like, understand what was going on in him. And at the same time, it's like, Aaron the the lack of focus on Aaron is what it hinges on and when I say the lack of focus I mean the lack of knowledge of what's going on in his head is what so much of the story hinges on so you can't really know that he's just going through all of this at the same time in a way he's grappling with the fact that he may have killed his mother but in like it's like how do you make that choice like it's like he doesn't have the wherewithal to think wait a minute that's such a tricky thing when you really think about his mother's death and him saving Bertolt's life, it's like, did he really save his life? Because if, did, I wonder if there's like a, an, like a, a beginning, like when this all started, like did this, it, or was it continuously a cycle? Like, did it all happen simultaneously? Everything. I'm going down a rabbit hole. But I, I like the rabbit hole. The rabbit hole doesn't, it's not pissing me off. It's not frustrating me or making me feel like, oh, this is a blot hole. It's just a rabbit hole of, of questions that you would think the story would have ended, but it didn't. I kind of like that. I kind of like that there's so much more for me to think about. Hmm. Aaron had to die in the end. I get it. He had to die. He had to. All the lives he had taken, there was no conceivable way for him to go on and live a life. It would have just meant more war at the end of the day to keep him alive. There would the whatever was left of the world would want his head on a platter, literally in this case. No, oh, Mikasa. The fact that he created a world for them where they just ran away and loved each other and lived in that cabin and he grew old. <laughs> and then told her to forget about him and the scarf he just wanted her to be happy and then that ending where he's able to just be a 16 well, how old is he like 16 17 maybe 18 the, i think the oldest he probably is is like 19 maybe and he just gets to exp he finally gets a chance to express his feelings and grapple with the fact that i'm gonna die when he opens his eyes and he sees Mikasa, he doesn't know at that point until that very moment. Like, he didn't know Mikasa was going to kill him, did he? I don't think he did. He didn't see that. He just knew that whatever Mikasa did is what will end. And I like that that's what he was marching towards. Like, he didn't, like, he moved forward for so many reasons. And yet, at the same time, it was... 
it just, he just had to bring about this 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 what this landscape of death and destruction it, he had to bring it about it just ha so happens that choosing this path <laughs> that Mikasa could end Titans I knew Mikasa was the shit she gets so much I feel like Mikasa catches so much shit I'm glad she was the one who ended it. <laughs> she killed Aaron. She freed Amir. She she ended Titans. Or maybe whoever the hell that kid was. It just restarted it, though. <laughs> At the end of the story. <laughs> but I knew Mikasa was that girl. See, Isayama wrote this ending for anyone who hates Mikasa. Because I see that girl catch way too much flack. For no damn reason. Like, let Mikasa live, y'all. She just wants to live with her scarf and her Eden. And, and Armin can tag along too. I knew she was the girl. That's my Mikasa. <laughs> I can't believe it's over. Oh, wow. And then Levi's ending. I feel like that's like the perfect ending for the humanity's strongest soldier who had to bear such a strong weight, such a burden. They all had to, to, to carry such heavy burdens and you just want them to, like Mikasa crying in the end and, and Aaron's little spirit birdie spirit flapping and picking up the scarf and wrapping it around her. It's like, I didn't want you to have to carry this, but if you choose to carry this, I'm gonna support you. Like, I, get, I feel like him wrapping the scarf around her is like keeping his promise. I think it was in season two, he's like, I'll wrap that scarf around you forever, all the time. I'll do it. I'll keep doing it for you, girl. Even when I'm a bird, I will fly and wrap that scarf around you. I'm still with you. What a masterpiece of a story, guys. I'm glad I watched this. I'm glad. And thank you all for watching this so much. If you enjoyed it, leave a thumbs up and tell me what you thought of the ending down below and subscribe. And there is no next time for Attack on Titan. But bitch, I'ma rewatch it. And a special shout out to the patrons, Midgey, Maya, Jenny, Katie, Tawny, See-Through Battle Monsters, Terrence, Sarah, Tyler, Juan, Beto, Ash, Nicole, Freddie, Marcella, Gabrielle, Alicia, Carmdahl, Sushi Senpai, Cozy Krobo, Gazelle, Maddie, Kate, Victoria, Queen Lydia, Sierra's Reaction Corner, Dexter, Chair Shark Cat, Drew, That Weird Person, Shirley, Luke, Salty, Cami, Andrew, Wanyo, JK, Klaus, Cersei, Rosary, Dove, Ivan, Kacha, Nino, Andrew, Christina, Donovan, Haley, Yoslin, Dev, Nicole, Lauren, Sella, K and D, Zeph, Nathan, Casey, Liam, Pierre, Montrev, Natalia, Michael, Gitchy Glam, Dazzler, Lordy, Autumn, Emmy, Megan, Castiel, Erica, James, Soapy, Ivy, Antonia, Morgan, Jordan, Zach, Marisa, Nandy, Marco, Jess, Tim, Alexander, Reen, Max, Ricky, and Jake. Thank you all so much, and I'll see you all next time.